This week on Tasty Utah, we're up Provo Canyon at the Sundance Mountain Resort. Sundance celebrates everything we love about the historic West. It's the epitome of an authentic Utah experience, and the food up here, well, it may just steal the show. There are so many options to choose from, like lunch that comes with a side of mountaintop views, a quick grab-and-go, or sophisticated evening dining, nice and slow. We're sitting down at the historic Albar and tasting some mouth-watering items from the Foundry Grill. Behind every good food story is a great people story. Taste Utah brings you the faces behind our local flavors, from soil and seeds to the variety of our authentically Utah restaurants. The views along the way, they're not bad either. Food is a necessity. It's how we create it, craft it, and experience it together that truly connects Utah's restaurant community. The secret to our sauce is simple. It's our farmers, artisans, chefs, restaurateurs, and hospitality professionals that make Utah a dining destination. You always have a seat at this table. What goes up? must come down but if you're asking me i'm taking the chairlift and we're dining at elevation this week taste utah is at the sundance mountain resort we're gonna sit down with vice president of hospitality kurt berman at the owl bar i can't wait for him to regale us with stories of all of the hospitality and food adventures that you can have when you visit sundance Kurt! Hi, Katie. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to be here. I couldn't have chosen a better day. It's absolutely beautiful. We have a feast set out for you today in the Alba okay. with some uh, dishes from the Foundry Grill and Chef Alex, our exec sous chef, is inside, ready to get started. Cannot wait. Let's do it. All right, lead the way. After you. Oh, thank you. Kurt, this is just such a beautiful space. Alex, it's so nice to meet you. And really, you weren't fooling around when you said that Alex had some things at the table for us. This <laughs> is beautiful, <laughs> right? But the L Bar is just one way to enjoy food and beverage at Sundown. So what are all of the different locations? Um, if the Foundry Grill is the beating heart of our Sundance food and beverage offerings, then the L Bar is our crown, crown jewel. The bar itself was brought over from Thermopolis in Wyoming and it's actually Butch Cassidy's bar that he used to drink at. Oh my um, gosh, yeah. so very, his, very historic. Very historic bar, and it's been unchanged since it was built um, back in the early 80s. Okay. We have live music every Friday and Saturday night. A uh, great place to come and get a drink, um, a pint of beer, a shot, cocktail, glass of wine, or some of the incredible food that we have. I love that, and, and, and these are some of the um, samplings that you might be able to try at the Owl Bar, but in partnership with the Foundry Grill. Correct, yeah. Correct? The, the food for the Owl Bar comes from the Foundry Grill. Okay. So there's a lot of tie-in together where we work uh, items off of that menu that may play into this one. Uh, the, the, I love the actual concept behind the Owl Bar and the Foundry. To me, they're, they're kind of brother and sister. They, they, the food is very similar, but obviously this is more bar-driven. Okay. Right? So obviously, you can see on the table here, pretzels. Um, we have a, a hot mustard sauce is one of the dips in there, and then we also do a pimento cheese dip, mm -hmm. and we add some house-made pickles. The Al Bar nachos are famous. Okay. Everybody comes up here just or for the nachos. Or would we say infamous? Infamous, with, there you go. Butch Cassidy, right? A little, Cassie, a little right? bit of that yeah. Off. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the, these dirty fries are okay. actually both available in the bar and the restaurant as well. Okay, awesome. Uh, we do our own house-cut fries, and then we add a, a truffle aioli on top of it, and we throw some everything bagel seasoning spice on top, okay. and then we do a poached egg. Oof, and uh, when you eat all that together, you, obviously it, it creates a, a pretty incredible dish. Mm -hmm. And it's such a popular demand that we, it was in the foundry, and then we added it to the bar menu as well. Yeah, it's like what you want when you're having like a libation. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. In the Alba particularly, we are very passionate about working with as many local uh, beverage companies as we can. Um, Alex's drink is actually made with uh, one of our favorite local uh, whiskey distillery, Sugar House, which we have a great partnership with. Their charcuterie is beyond epic. This is a good example for us to play into our local cuisine, right? So we're using different uh, meats that are, are from local places here, mostly Criminelli. Mm -hmm. They do some fantastic work there. We yeah. like to bring in a few different cheeses from a few different 
of the farms around here. Heber Valley Cheese, which is just over the hill here. We love yes. we love using a lot of their product. I love that. Uh, Gold Creek Farms is another one that we use a lot. Beautiful. He does a fantastic job yeah. up there and we really enjoy Fernando what his product and is. Ashley. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What a great way to get a little taste Utah experience going on, even just with the charcuterie board, right? Um, Cremonilli, I think we featured them on our, in our third or fourth season. Yeah. Gold Creek, Heber Valley. These are local producers that are all recognized not only nationally but internationally for the quality and caliber of food that they're putting out. So you have this great community to play in, I guess, mm -hmm. as a chef, and that has to feel pretty fun. I think that's what we do, right? Chefs care deeply about where their food comes from yes. and what it means to them. You are VP of hospitality. The Alvar is one element of what you do. You mentioned right. the Foundry Grill a little bit earlier. The Foundry Grill is... It's uh, it's your traditional all-day dining restaurant where you can have enjoy breakfast, lunch, dinner, and our fantastic Sunday brunch. I love it. Is it buffet style or is it? It's, it's buffet okay, style, but wonderful. with lots of live cooking stations. Okay. And the Foundry Grill is open all year round. It is uh, seasonal. We change the menu three or four times a year. Obviously with the big changes of the seasons, we like to bring in new produce that is, is local to the region that, that we can use at that time. Sure. But throughout the course of the year, we actually change a few things here and there to just, you know, keep it fresh, keep it alive, make people, you know, want to come back up and try new things. I love it. And you're the executive sous chef of Sundance Resort. So how many restaurants are you suing over? So there are three main restaurants here. Okay. We talked about the Foundry Grill. We have the Lookout, which is more of a kind of a casual concept. Uh, we've done a few different versions of food there. There's okay. also the Tree Room, which is our fine dining restaurant. The Tree Room. Let's yes. talk about the Tree Room. The Tree Room is, is kind of special to me. I, I really enjoy what the Tree Room does. I think that over the years, they've they've done such a great job at uh, making a name for themselves and letting people see what is important about the food there. I think the Tree Room is very unique in the setting. The, obviously the dining room is, is beautiful and yeah. it has such a unique setting for people to enjoy. We also like to use things like bison uh, or elk, um, duck, things that are a little bit more uh, unique that you don't see on typical menus all the time. Yeah. And we highlight that. That's very indicative of Utah food. And so when you want to celebrate time and place, I mean, we here we are up the canyon. We're nestled in nature. Having these great options, this beautiful breakfast, lunch dinner spa that you can just kind of duck into and then get out real quick and then something to look forward to which is this beautiful offering this elegant dining the food and the menu is elevated mm -hmm. the experience still is a little rustic because that's what you would expect right that's right you're also offering lodging sundance is, is a is a the full name is sundance mountain resort and we are a full service resort. We have a, a great range of accommodation options. Um, all guests of Sundance get to enjoy uh, all the experiences on, on offer at Sundance, just like what we call day guests get to enjoy as well. But you get some additional benefits. In the winter, we do guided snowshoe hikes. In the summer, we do guided hiking on the mountain. This is all for, for lodging guests, of course. You have access to our art studio, and you've talked about community and nature. But our third value is really art as well and creativity, mm. which is really how Sundance story began. Sundance at the center is it's art, right? Yeah. And there's so many avenues for art. And I think Sundance has done such a great job of taking what we love most and using it as its advantage. People get to come up here and really just feel like they're a part of nature, get to feel mm. like they're a part of the mountain and they get to enjoy what is around them, you know, naturally. And, and art is a big part of that, whether it's looking at the beautiful mountain or tasting the food or creating art yourself. Yes. I think that's what we're about. That's beautiful. Well, we're so glad that you're here. So nice to meet you, you Chef. Well. Um, I'm gonna leave you to finish all of this. <laughs> Thank you. And then I am gonna go back into the kitchen and meet Chef Stephanie. I cannot Perfect. wait. She's and great. Um, just thank you so much for sharing. You are both so wonderful. Thank, thank you, you, Katie. Chef Stephanie, it's so exciting to be back in your kitchen. Now, how long have you worked at Sundance? So I just hit my year mark. You just hit your two year weeks mark. Ago. Yep. What brought you up here? Um, so I came here for a visit. Okay. A friend of mine had just started working here. Wonderful. He said, you have to see this for yourself. Oh. I took one step out that plane and couldn't believe my eyes. What are you going to make for us? 
I'm gonna make our signature Brussels sprouts. Signature Brussels sprouts. So this has been on the menu for a very long, time. very long time. These so are one I'm of those. Told. This is one of those dishes you don't really this do a lot a of staple. touching. Okay, cool. So Brussels sprouts going in the fryer. Going in the fryer. Get them nice and crispy okay. for you. Just drop, drop them right about in. two minutes on there. And at the Foundry Grill, you're doing a lot of seasonal stuff. Absolutely. When you live in a state like this, where agriculture is key, you have so much at your disposal that I've not been exposed to yeah. from where I'm from. Right. So having people who've grown up here and lived here and have gone through all these seasonal changes yeah. and know what product that they're seeing and tasting and feeling it, it's it's really, it really is quite something to see. I think these Very are looking cool. pretty. Looking pretty done. What are we looking for to indicate doneness? These little brown, beautiful, crispy leaves of the natural oh, sugar in the Brussels sprouts okay. will bring out that caramelization. Yeah. Just give a little shake here. A little shake. In our bowl, we got our house-made ginger citrus soy glaze beautiful. on there. And I'm sure you're making that often because I'm sure you oh, go yes. through these Brussels sprouts all the time. Absolutely. A little little salt. We do our sherry pickled craisins on there. Sherry pickled craisins. A little bit. Fun. Absolutely. To give those a nice toss. Love it. I'm standing back just Absolutely. to avoid any splashing since Absolutely. I don't have an apron on. I have a full day of eating. Don't worry, we can get you an apron and get you in here. <laughs> hey, no worries. I like to think I'm Utah's favorite sous chef, but that's a title Absolutely. I've given myself. So I've been told. <laughs> and then we just do a little toasted cashew nuts on there. Ugh. And then we're we're good to go. All right. Oh, look at that. So yummy. Okay. Chef Stephanie, it's just been a magical, magical time in your kitchen. I got to enjoy a bunch of your food at Absolutely. the Owl Bar. And what you're doing up here is exceptional. Really excited to head to the tree room next. Absolutely. Glad to have you. Since 1969, when Robert Redford first purchased the land now known as Sundance, it has been synonymous with celebrating nature, film, art, and of course, it's fabulous food offerings. Their mission is to tell stories, and some of the best stories are told around the dinner table. We're back at Sundance Mountain Resort and pulling up a table at the quintessential Utah County fine dine restaurant, The Tree Room, which happens to be the oldest room on property and built around a tree, symbolizing the resort's commitment to care for the natural environment that surrounds it. Sundance is nothing short of an experience celebrating time and place, serving up a generous portion of Utah hospitality, honoring the magnificence of our breathtaking mountains, all while making certain some of our favorite Utah artisans are at the center of your plate. Stephen, I have to say it's been a phenomenal day at Sundance. I've really enjoyed myself just learning about the food and hospitality. And I feel like we saved the best for last because the true room is just such an exquisite part of Sundance. This, this space was actually uh, the first building built here at Sundance and there's been some evolutions of the true room, but uh, I think we're our best version of ourselves currently. Okay. It's fantastic, and uh, we are Sundance's fine dining restaurant. Yeah, absolutely, and I feel like you are you are Utah's quintessential fine dining restaurant, or at least one of them. I mean, you're nestled up here in a canyon. It's a unique experience, unlike any other. And then the attention to detail in this space is lovely. I mean, it's called the tree room because over my shoulder there is a tree in this room. Yes, there's there's many trees in this space, but yes. this is the most famous, and we get our name the tree room from, of course. Um, the idea was to build the building around the tree. Uh, we've preserved the tree as best we can and uh, it still stands today. Which is really, really special. And even in this space, I mean, though Robert Redford sold the Sundance Resort, his legacy still lives on here. Yes. There's even this really special library room that I popped my head into where it's his collection of, of his own books. It's all Robert Redford's personal collection, so it's pretty special to have that here right in the restaurant with us, and we'll even feature that space uh, as a private dining room. What are some of the items that you have on the menu? We don't have any of them in front of us right now, which is unique to Taste Utah, and that is because you take such care and attention to detail that I actually don't get to see the food until I go back in the kitchen with Chef Diane, is that right? Yes. What, so what are some of the other items that you have on the menu? So a wonderful, wonderful uh, showcase of some local uh, Utah flavors. Our, uh, our duck breast is phenomenal. We have a nice 
light uh, spring and summer pasta tagliatelle telly dish. Beautiful. They're excellent. I think Chef's strawberry ricotta salad is amazing with a nice tart vinaigrette with the creaminess of the ricotta in there as well. And then our desserts are phenomenal. We have some classics like the berry and custard, of course, and then some of our newer desserts for the season like a lavender and chocolate, which are oh, all incredible. Nice. You know, Sundance is all about storytelling and, and celebrating local artisans. So whether it's our, uh, you know, sourdough or sourcing things from local artisans and our, our cheeses are all Heber Valley or yeah. local area. And uh, it's all, uh, it's all very close we to We learned us. that Gold Creek Farms, Heber Valley cheese, and that yes. in the, though you may not make some of your breads at the Foundry Grill, this sourdough is a new program that you started, and talk to us a little bit about that. I'll, I'll, I'll take a slice yes, if please. you don't mind. Yes, of course. Okay. It's a local Lehigh uh, flour. We use a regular flour as well as whole wheat. Wonderful. And then our starter we have had going since November of 22, so we mm. hope to continue that legacy for a long, long time. I love that, and I think one of the things that people don't realize, we've done a lot of bread segments um, and on on Taste Utah over the years. Yes. Flour is so important. So you're getting it from a local Lehigh Roller Mills, which yes. is just literally down the street. Oh, yes. We're in Provo Canyon, right? Yes. Um, Sundance is such a special resort. Um, you're also offering wine. The True Room is known for their wine menu. So do you yes. want to talk a little bit about that, the beverage program? We have a, a Wine Spectator award-winning wine list and here we have featured one of our uh, Sundance labels which is Soder Vineyards. Oh lovely. This is a vineyard that is uh, not just organic but beyond that it's biodynamic mm. so the hardest certification. It's just an incredible opportunity to have them make a specific wine for us at Sundance that we can share with our guests. It's beautiful and that's the Willamette Valley so is it a Pinot Noir? This is the Pinot Noir right here and this is a different Sundance uh, so this is a uh, Honig, which is out of California, yeah. which are Sauvignon Blanc. That's oh, wonderful. So excellent. you've got a Pinot Noir, Sauv Blanc that are all under sort of the Sundance Reserve label. Yes. Listen, I love the sourdough. It's delicious, and I definitely have to try that honey butter. Oh, yes. Um, but I cannot wait to get back into the kitchen with Chef Diane. I hear she's just this epic female chef, yes. which we love. Absolutely. And um, see a dish being prepared. Of course, we're excited to have you in the kitchen oh. as well. Well, Stephen, just thank you so much, and uh, I'll pop back there, yeah? Sounds wonderful. Okay. Pleasure. Chef Diane, it's such an honor to be back here with you in the kitchen of the Tree Room. I mean, it's such a legacy kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> and how long have you been here? Um, so collectively around three years. What position did you start in? Um, so I actually started over on Garmage. Um, okay. It was my internship. And then I left and came back and worked my way up to chef. Oh, how cool. Okay, so what are you going to make for us? Um, so today I'm going to be making rabbit mole. Okay, a rabbit mole, yeah. I love it. So we can get started. Okay. Um, so just put some oil. A little oil on the pan. Mm -hmm. Make sure that's nice and hot. Yeah, you just turn it up a little bit. That flame is just, you want the yeah. rabbit to you want, sing, right? Yeah, you want, the, you want to get a nice sear on it, so you want the oil to be nice and hot. So this is the rabbit hind leg. Okay. Um, it's already cooked um, confit in duck fat. So you're confiting this in duck fat. Yeah. So for people who don't know what that means, yeah. break it down. So basically you slow cook it in fat. Yes, um, and it's so we're so using good. duck fat. So yeah, it's, absolutely. It's really tender, makes it really nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's how you know. That's how you know you got it to the right yeah. temperature, right? What do you love about cooking? I love the creativity. Um, I just really love food in general. Recipes, ingredients, how to manipulate things to turn it into something beautiful. Oh, I love I that. I love all of it. Well, you're very talented <laughs> at it as well. So at the same time, I'm gonna um, start cooking the salsa bee. Okay. So we're gonna get that hot as well. Okay, and what is salsa bee for people that don't know? So salsa bee is a root vegetable. It's pretty mild. Uh -huh. um, it's it's kind of, different. It's like black on the outside, but okay. stark white on the inside. All right, and it's nice and starchy, yeah. yeah. Then the mole, tell me about that. Are you making that? How long does it take to make a mole? So the mole takes about just like a day. A day, yeah. yeah. And what kind of, what are you doing? Like a chocolate mole? Or, yeah, yeah, it's a chocolate mole. Mm, yeah. yeah. So we can go ahead and put this in the oven. So you're finishing it in the oven just to have it cook all the way through, warm yeah. all the way through. Yeah. Cool. When you're in a restaurant, a lot of the things you have on the line are par-cooked because yeah. You need to be able to fire them. Yeah, just cook them really fast. Yep, totally, <laughs> yeah. totally. Otherwise, this would take hours. Hours, <laughs> to hours. Do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so we can kind of start plating. Start to plate, okay. It's supposed to be three ways. Yes. Um, oh, I love that. I really like utilizing ingredients and different techniques. I like to bring in different cultures and really, you know, make it a great melting pot of cuisine. I love um, that. Yeah. Start with the fundamentals of yes. tradition Traditional, and classic yes. technique and then build cultural significance on top of yeah. it. Oh, how cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then a little herb A little oil. herb oil. Okay. We can go ahead and put these down. Kind right. of make like a little stack of them. And this is our mole. Beautiful. Just smother the rabbit. Nice and smothered. Um, these are chipotle candied pepitas. Oh, I love that. So a little heat, a little sweet, and then a little crunch. Yes, exactly. Yum. Gotta have all the different textural elements. Yeah. And then some pomegranate oh, seeds. Oh, pomegranates. A little burst of acid. Some chives. Yes. We love fresh herbs. <laughs> mm, I mean, who doesn't, right? When we were talking to Chef Steph, I mean, just about how there's so much fresh produce here, so why not use it, right? Yeah, it just enhances it so yeah. much. It's so cool to see all of the ways that you're infusing all of the values that you talk about into the core components of your dish. Yeah. I mean, that is beautiful. And then it also gets um, some salt speed chips. Yes, a little crunch. So that's the third element. That's the third. Oh, I love it. The plating is just gorgeous. I mean, this in and of itself is art. And we talked about it early on today, how at the core of a Sundance, Sundance is all about art. Yeah. It's about music, mm -hmm. and film, and undoubtedly it is about food. And yeah. the way and the level that you are executing culinary experiences mm -hmm. here, it really is such a pleasure, such a gift to our food and beverage community in Utah. Um, thank you so much, Chef yeah, Diane.